provide the thrust to power the engine so essential that they are propelled from the engine at exactly the right speed required by the aircraft. This is largely determined by the size and shape of the propelling nozzle that can give a kick to the gases as they leave the engine. The completed engine is of course a rather more complex affair once the noise suppression, pollution reduction, cooling, lubrication, electrical, fuel and other systems have all been added. But the four sections of the working cycle remain unaltered. The compressor sucks in the air and squeezes it. The combustor ignites the fuel and air to produce the bang, that explosive expansion which forces the gases into the turbine. The turbine drives the compressor and the exhaust blows the gases through the nozzle to provide the thrust. Some engine parts when seen on their own can appear grey and immobile even dull and uninteresting. But appearances can often be deceptive. The jet engine was invented in the search for speed and power and this component will soon be breaking the sound barrier. Soon after the invention of the jet engine, it was decided that brute force alone wasn't enough and designers started to look for ways to develop this new found source of power. The type of engine that we've been looking at is called the turbojet. It was the first kind of jet to be made and it remains the best for high speed flight as it's very powerful but small and has a low frontal area so it can be easily streamlined. The turbojet can be made even more powerful by adding reheat. In this system, fuel is sprayed into the exhaust and lit, so there is a second combustion stage which provides extra thrust. Reheat is generally used only for short periods to give extra acceleration, such as on takeoff or maximum climb. On landing, however, deceleration is wanted and then thrust reversers are used. These are flaps that move to direct